Thank you so much. We've also got $10 from SSBB Hacks, who says, thank you to the volunteers that sort through the donation messages. Give them a round of applause, everybody. They do a very hard job. We've got $10 from Soulless Gamer, who says, I'm playing The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth right now while watching the GDQ. I need to donate during the Binding of Isaac run. Keep up the good work and happy 10th anniversary GDQ. It's coming right up next. In fact, not only is Binding of Isaac, uh, uh, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth coming up next, it's coming up right now. Give a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Uh, I'm Mike Casper. Hello, I am Samuel. And we are your commentators for this amazing seven character speed run of the game. Uh, Stone Age Marcus, of course, is representing the entire Isaac community. And he has gone on record and said that he is not going to die a single time. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see about that. Uh, we've got a lot of crazy things that are about to happen. Again, this is a very difficult game. Uh, he's gonna try and beat it at least seven times in a row or uh, die trying. So uh, without further ado, uh, Marcus, are you ready? I'm ready. You guys feeling good? I'm good. I mean, we're ready. Uh, GDQ, are you guys ready? All right. Well, then, Marcus, you want to count it down for us? Yeah, go ahead and uh, let's do this. Three, two, one, and let's go. <clears throat> we'll roll with that. Well, if you guys don't know about The Binding of Isaac, it is a top-down 2D shooter made by famous indie developer Edmund McMillan. And if you're familiar with Twitch, you guys will know that when something bad usually happens in a stream, people spam the Bible Thump emote. And fun fact, that emote is actually the, the protagonist of this game, Isaac. Can I get some Bible Thumps in the chat? I heard that Zam is actually going to donate for every Bible Thump in chat. That's true. That may or may not be accurate, and it may be less than a cent, but... <laughs> the most important thing you guys need to know about The Binding of Isaac is that it's a roguelike game. What that means is that everything in the game is randomly generated. All the bosses, all the items, all the power-ups, the exact combination of stuff in this run has never been seen before by any human in the world. So that means that speedrunning a roguelike is different than speedrunning a normal game like Mario or Zelda. Every run is a brand new challenge and it's up to the player to figure out the best way to solve it on the fly. So as you guys can see, Marcus is playing the new character, Forgotten. And this was introduced in the latest version of the game, Booster Pack 5. And here's his first Devil Deal. A pivotal moment in the run. Oh! oh! All right, so Marcus is going to pick up the knife. The knife is one of the strongest items in the game. It turns your tears into an actual, literal knife, as you can see. Uh, now, on the Forgotten, it's not the strongest item. It's still going to be a damage up for him when he's in his bone form. But when he turns into his ghost, he'll be able to throw that knife and deal a lot of damage to all of his enemies. The knife is considered to be one of the best items in the game. And as I said, all the items are random, so he doesn't really get to choose what items. He just has to make do with what he got. So we're off to a great start here. Now there's 10 floors. Um, oh! Ooh. So, uh, Marcus, is that, a, is that a death? Does that count as a death? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> it was. I was not thinking forgotten half heart. Oh, well. Unfortunately, it was, it, it was a little, uh, little risky, but un luckily for him, we do have this death timer in effect, where normally you'd have to reset all the way back to basement one, but for marathon strats, he now has to stand in purgatory for about 45 seconds before he comes back. And this is done for seeded racing, such that um, when two players are going head-to-head -head playing on the same seed, one, it, it's kind of anticlimactic if one player dies in the middle of it. And so this was done to just make things uh, still hurt you, but not lose the run entirely. I had to show off the mechanic. It would have yeah. been unfair to our great mod developer, Zamuel, <laughs> to not show off. Yes, this brilliant coding that he put into the exactly. game. Exactly. Thank you, thank you.
very nice. He's gonna pick up the PJs. It gives him four soul hearts back, so that's gonna allow him to go back into his ghost form. So as Marcus makes his way through the caves here, we can talk a little bit about the history of the game. The original version of The Binding of Isaac was made in Flash, but today Marcus is playing on the remade version. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth was released three years later in 2014, and it's had two expansion packs that have each made the game better and more complicated called Afterbirth and Afterbirth Plus. And Marcus is currently playing on the latest version of Afterbirth Plus. And even on top of that, Marcus is also playing with the mod called Racing Plus. So if you guys are watching closely, you may have noticed that things are slightly different than in the normal game. For example, we just saw the seated death mechanic that happened. He turned into like kind of a ghost form when he died. And um, this, he's playing a, a special custom challenge where it automatically puts you on the next character when you complete a run, where you can complete seven characters in a row seamlessly without having to go back to the menu. So if you guys are watching this and you see something that's a little bit off or something unusual, it's probably an artifact of something that Racing Plus is doing on top of the vanilla game. Now you might notice there that he switched his ghost form again to throw that knife. It's going to be much faster to kill them off. Uh, that is a unique mechanic to the Forgotten since you have two different forms there. So Marcus did this on Basement 2 and he just did it again. Something that you guys may not know at home is that the Forgotten has kind of a hidden mechanic where you can switch to the soul, take a Devil Deal, switch back, and you can end up quote unquote stealing a Devil Deal item that way. But now Marcus is locked to the Forgotten. He has no soul hearts. He's not able to switch back to the soul. And that's kind of an interesting mechanic that was actually not intentional by the developers. But once they found out, they decided it was interesting enough to leave in the game and they intentionally left it in. Shoutouts to Kilburn who is the main coder on who made the Forgotten. So this is one of the first main bosses that you face in the game. It's on the sixth floor. It's called Mom's Foot, where it's basically your mom trying to step on you. Uh, pretty straightforward there. Marcus makes quick work of her, and he's going to roll through his Polaroid and decide to take an item instead. That's something that's unique to Season 6, where instead of needing the Polaroid or the negative in order to access the final levels of the game, we decide to remove that, just to make it a little bit more easier, and we'll talk about that as well a little bit further on. Yeah, the he's uh, Marcus was gonna be able to jump into the chest at the end of the cathedral and go to the, you know, the final floor without needing those photos. So let's talk a little bit about the category. Today the goal of the speedrun is to beat the game seven times in a row with seven different characters. And each character gets assigned a random powerful starting item at the beginning of the run in order to get the run going. And on this run, um, he started with, what, Jacob's Ladder? Yeah. Yep. Jacob's nice. Ladder was one of the starting items, which is, you can see the electricity going on the screen. And that's what's caused by the starting item. It's really handy in synergizing with the knife here. So how fast Marcus will be able to finish all seven randomly generated runs will be a combination of both luck and skill. He might randomly get some good items or some bad items, but on top of that, there's adjustments and strategies that he's gonna be doing. So this run is really good, but for example, if he had a bad build, he could go out of his way to try to get more items from shops and treasure rooms. Now that is also a unique mechanic to the Forgotten. You might have seen that he has something called Bone Hearts. It's a new mechanic that came out in, I believe, After Earth Plus, where basically you have a temporary heart container, and if you lose all of your hearts, if you take, if you lose the red hearts within that container, if you take one more hit, you actually lose that container completely. Uh, so if you think of The Legend of Zelda, uh, where your heart containers always remain, the Forgotten has this temporary mechanic there. That makes them a little bit more difficult, but there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with that, uh, such as take additional damage, get your damage uh, shields if you have the Polaroid, things like that. So this is the second main boss of the game. It's called Mom's Heart. Again, uh, the mom theme. You're trying to take her down as quickly as possible. Marcus makes really good use of his ghost form, his uh, soul form, in order to make best use of his knife. So in this category, a good run is, you want to get it about 10 minutes per character. And we can see that this is the second to last floor now. 
Marcus is at seven minutes and 47. Handily, you guys can see that on the screen. That's part of the mod. And so he's looking on track for uh, a good time for this first character here. For sure. And shout outs to Zamiel for putting in that timer because he's a masterful coder. <laughs> okay. It wasn't that hard, but... <laughs> hey, timers are hard. Timers can be very hard. That is a very good pickup for Marcus. Now the he has Emperor, the Emperor card. The best card in the game. Uh, oh, definitely baby. for speedrunning. Uh, the Emperor automatically teleports you to the boss plate of that floor. Now, as Marcus takes on himself, Isaac, uh, as the ninth boss of the game, uh, he'll be able to beat this boss, enter the chest, and then he'll be able to teleport all the way to the end. Oh, yeah. So you can see the Forgotten is such an interesting character. Marcus here showing off, switching between the Soul and the Forgotten to kind of, based on the attacks that the enemy is doing. It's a very skill-based character, you can see here. That's also the reason why he's doing it first. The Forgotten is actually one of the hardest characters in this custom season, um, but he's able to take advantage of the Soul form, use his body in order to block the tears, and now he can go into the chest. Emperor card, skipping the hardest floor in the game. It's gonna save him probably about one to two minutes, I would say. Uh, it's gonna be a little sketchy, but he oh. does make it through. That was really close. One more hit, and he would have got... Had to wait 45 seconds for the ghost timer. And I believe Marcus might have forgotten he didn't take the Polaroid, too, because I was panicking there. <laughs> uh, if he had the Polaroid, he would have had five seconds in order to take that item, uh, or in order to kill off the final boss. But he didn't have it, but he, he sketched on through, so... Oh, interesting. You're actually gonna check for a curse room here. Yeah, so there's, uh, there's numerous safety strats that we've come up with in order to make this very marathon safe. It looks like Marcus is looking for the curse room, which was that room he was just in, just to try and get a soul heart early. Okay, that's really smart. Yeah, that way he can protect himself. So for Eve, which is the second character in this run, uh, as for his choice, uh, Eve has a special ability called the Horror of Babylon, which gives you a damage multiplier and speed. Um, and then this way, he now has a soul heart protecting his red hearts. Now, this is really important when you go into Basement 2, because when you go into Basement 2, there's something called a Devil Deal. But the only way you access that Devil Deal is if you do not take any Red Heart damage. So now that Marcus has that half Soul Heart remaining, he can take one hit before the end of this floor in order to guarantee his Devil Deal. It also, it, what's really important for me is being able to take any Devil Deal I see, and this guarantees it. Yeah, for sure. So when you're taking a Devil Deal, you actually have to trade off your Red Heart containers on most characters. On the Forgotten, you didn't have to, but here in particular, you did. Uh, so when he gets to the boss fight, if he does defeat it with his same hearts, that means he has half a Soul Heart remaining and two Heart containers that he can sacrifice to Devil Deals no matter what. So one other thing we can point out is that Notice that Marcus starts with the item called the School Bag, which was another item added in Afterbirth Plus. It allows him to have two active items. So you saw there that he had uh, the Bottle of Pills item. And normally in a speedrun, you would just completely avoid that item and uh, you know not worry about it, because your D6 is better. But in this run, he can take whatever active item is there, now he takes it, now he has two active items, and he can end up using the Bottle of Pills as the run goes on. Actually, he probably won't use it, because pills aren't so useful, but... Uh, I don't know, Marcus, are you going to end up using that, do you think? No, I just want to be able to trade it out if I see a double deal. So here we go. Here's the basement two double deal, the most important part of the run. And there you go. He's going to trade it out, but it's not going to help him because he didn't have his roll-up. Oh, maybe? No. So he tried to use the, uh, the demon judgy there in order to sacrifice some red hearts in order to try and get another item in that devil deal pool. Uh, he also picked up the nail. That nail is going to be a temporary damage up in the room that he uses it in, but he's primarily going to use it for the one soul heart that spawns whenever you use it. It's a six room recharge, so every time he clears six normal sized rooms, he'll be able to use that again to gain more health. Uh, there's not too much going on right now, so we could probably fit in a couple donations. Absolutely. We've got $50 from Tanum, who says, shout out to Marcus. Really cool to see someone I'm familiar with representing a game that I've enjoyed watching friends destroy with speed on a daily basis. Take my energy for good mapping. And we've got $15 from Buttercup, who said, I had to donate during the game that introduced me to my husband. We met in Twitch chat. He bought me this game to get my attention, and it worked. We were married in July. We decided to name our daughter, who was due in March, Eve, in honor of this game. Glad that to see Isaac back in a GDQ rotation. Very Good luck, cool. Stone Age Marcus. That is the sweetest story I have ever heard in my entire life. 
So Marcus is going to make it to his, I believe, Caves 1 boss right now. Uh, now, again, there is something called Devil Deal Math involved. You might notice uh, just above the timer in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a 33.75% chance. That's what tells you what your chance is that a Devil Deal is going to open up at the end of this boss fight. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, so he has to take his speed ball, which is a speed up, and move on to the next floor. Yeah, so most of the time you don't get the Devil Deal on Caves 1. You're really hitting it. In most runs, you'll hit it on Basement 2, Caves 2, Depths 2, and so on and so forth, every second floor. Yeah, for sure. So as you can see now, the math is up to 67.5%. That means it's a good chance that it's going to happen. There are a couple items that you can pick up that can increase that chance or even guarantee it. And uh, those are items that definitely you want to find in a more safer marathon run like this. But if you want to go fast, you don't necessarily need them. You'd rather get higher damage and go fast, fast, fast. I just want to highlight something that Stone Age Marcus is doing. Um, you can see that he's killing a lot of enemies with his ball of bandages. Ah. And there he took a hit. Um, it's very dangerous to do that in the caves because there's a lot of enemies, but you can see that in most rooms he's using it. And this is something that casual players do not do. And it, actually one of the most skill-based components of this game is using your orbitals effectively. And so just watch the run as Marcus uses the ball of bandages. It's, it's really difficult to do and uh, very, very good for speedrunning purposes because you can kill everything really fast. The hitbox on Gertie is really bizarre. Yeah, Gertie's a little bit difficult. This is also the champion version, so Gertie spawns a lot of enemies. Now, Gertie's not going to shoot back, which is nice, but again, a lot of health to burn through. And since the map itself doesn't allow Marcus to actually use his ball of bandages the entire time, he's going to have to play a little bit safer. There's the double deal. Roll it. All right, he's going to take the goat head out of the six options that he saw. That goat head is now going to guarantee his double deal. See, it's almost like commentator luck, obviously luck. <laughs> uh, where now he's going to be able to see a double deal every single floor until after the eighth floor. Beautiful ball of bandage usage here. That's get... what a commentator curse looks like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, so the thing is, with the nail, the active item that he has, he's going to be able to use that item and get a free soul heart every six rooms. So Marcus is feeling really healthy right now. Um, he's probably not going to die on this run due to them having all the extra health from the nail. And he can even afford to take a few hits in a room. It doesn't really matter all that much. Because remember, in a speed run, it, it's about going fast. It actually doesn't matter if you get hit. OK, now it's looking a bit scary. Down to his red heart. Commentator curse. Uh-oh. I'm not saying nothing. These enemies are pretty annoying, alternating back and forth between being invisible and visible. They're called nulls, fun fact. See, I never know their names. I just associate them. Yeah, the only reason I know their names is from modding. Oh. Because it, it shows all the, the names of the enemies in, like, the editor. That's fair. Have there been any names that, like, really surprise you out of nowhere? Oh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. <laughs> in the original one, in the credits, it would show the name of every... Right. Every enemy. Oh, another difficult boss here. Yeah, uh, this is one of the hardest bosses in the game, probably. Yeah, especially for this build, since Marcus doesn't have a whole lot of fire rate. He's really depending on that ball of bandages to clear a lot of things, so he has to sit back and kind of take it easy. Yeah, so this is a great example of showing the disparity in Isaac runs, and it's really, oh, devil deal. Darn. Now, this is Krampus. Krampus can show up occasionally uh, in your devil deal. Uh, Krampus is going to drop one of two items. It's either going to be his head or a lump of coal. Marcus decides to roll it. He ends up picking up the mark, which is a speed up, a soul heart, and damage up. So it is a good item, but he does need more. You're gonna, so he loses his Whore of Babylon. That's important to note here. He, when you're on w two or more red hearts, he loses a little bit of damage. But that's OK, because he can take another Devil Deal at some point later on in the run. I'm going to go ahead, too, so. Oh, that's Not a good point. We're worried about it. Yeah, so he'll be able to grab a Devil Deal on this next floor. Now that he knows that Krampus is no longer there, he knows at the very least he's going to get his Whore of Babylon back after this quick fight. Yeah, so we, like, if you can notice that Marcus's tears are pretty wimpy right now, and I just want to highlight the, the disparity in Isaac runs. The previous one, we saw a very powerful build with Mom's Knife, and in this run, he has like a bit of wimpy tears, and it really goes to show that as a speedrunner, you, you have to be good with good builds, and you have to be good with bad builds. It's a lot like, like Texas Hold'em or poker. You know, you have to do the best with the cards you're dealt, and there's skill even in having a bad build. Look at the excellent ball of bandage usage here, dealing so much damage to the boss. The shovel. <laughs> Probably not the best time right now. The shovel would allow him to dig down into the next floor. He's going to take the dark bum instead, oh. roll his Polaroid and negative into the magic mushroom. That's the magic a big mushroom pickup. is a huge pickup. It's going to be in all stats up more it's or less. Not. I started Cricket's head. Oh. oh. Good point. Well, never mind. Uh, so, 
So oh. fun fact about the game is that Cricket's head is a damage multiplier. Magic Mushroom, also a damage multiplier, but they don't stack. And so at this point, having Magic Mushroom gives a little bit of speed, but not much else to Marcus's build. Um, there's lots of little technical things like that in this game that you really have to memorize all the item and the item interactions. There's, we should mention that there's like over 500 items in the game. And as a speedrunner, you have to know what all of them do. And not only do you have to know what all of them do, you have to know all of the interactions between. So it's like 500 times 500 item synergies. That is some quick math right there. Speaking of quick math, we can probably fit in a couple donations. Absolutely, I love math. We've got a $10 donation from Kenny54, who says, finally able to watch the Isaac speedrun live with my wife. She loves this game and finally got 1 million and 1%. Keep up the good work and let's end cancer. Congratulations on that. And we've got a $500 donation. All right. From I am error 54 who says, I have been both addicted to and afflicted by the Binding of Isaac for a few years now, so no better time to donate, right? Thanks to all the runners and the GDQ team for these inspiring oh. fun events. I'll be watching all week. Best of luck. Thank you so very much. $500 is huge. And what else is huge is that sacrificial dagger. Now, we were talking about orbitals earlier. That sacrificial dagger is a lot of damage. It's going to give him a lot more safety around him, and it'll allow him to deal damage no matter which side his ball bandages or his dagger is on. Yeah, sacrificial dagger is considered the fifth best item in the game, so that's a huge pickup for Marcus here. And as you can see, in casual runs, you don't really bomb out of a lot of rooms. But in speed runs, you want to use all of your bombs essentially to clear the easy rooms and bomb out of the hard rooms. And you can see that usually the big rooms that you want to bomb out of are the L rooms and the 2x2 two two rooms. So Marcus utilizing his bombs well in this run. He has 10 left, so he can actually bomb through a whole bunch when he gets to the next floor. Now again, it's going to be Mom's heart. Really important here, he does have the sacrificial dagger, so you can just stick it right in there. It blocks tears for him, so he'll be able to survive that no problem and take his last oh. double deal, and it's going to be a savior. It's going to be his mom's knife. Another again. one. Beautiful. So that's pretty lucky getting two mom's knives in a row. Yeah, you know, it's not like Marcus is good or anything at this game, obviously. No, <laughs> Marcus is actually one of the best runners at this game, especially in North America. I would say that he's probably top three, um, which is a great representation for the Isaac community. So we're very happy to have him here. Yeah, what's interesting about this game is we actually hold regular tournaments um, pretty much ever since release. There's been over 100 tournaments, I believe, in total. And, uh, you know, people love racing live against each other. And Marcus actually is the host of one of the new... Um, Discord servers is called the Racing of Isaac, twitch.tv slash the Racing of Isaac, and it has an associated Discord server. And so that's where most of the Isaac tournaments nowadays are hosted on that Twitch channel. So definitely thanks to Marcus for doing that. It's a nice little thing. Yeah, as someone that's been around the Isaac community for you know seven and a half years now, um, just the evolution of the of the racing community has been huge, and we've been able to see some great talent. Again, there's a lot of amazing racers over in Europe. Uh, which is why I'm here and not them, because I was I was the guy that they were like, hey, Casper, you can make the trip, right? Yeah, sure, why not? Ooh, the key. Dad's key is fantastic in a speed run. For obvious reasons, allows you to skip rooms. And Marcus will probably do that once he hits a hard room here. Now, one thing you may notice is that instead of going up to the chest, Marcus went down to the lamb. So what it, this... In this season, the characters alternate up and down, up and down, up and down. So you guys are going to get some variety of both paths in this game. Which is very unique because normally we just go to the chest. It's a little bit easier. This is going to look really easy, but the lamb is actually a really difficult boss just because of all of its different types of attacks. But again, with that sacrificial dagger, Marcus is going to make the second character look easy. Easy peasy. So character three, let's go. So something that was mentioned in the interview about Season 6 was that instead of wasting your time doing resets uh, in order to try and find your first item room to find a starting item, Season 6 actually starts you with an instant item. Now that, draw that draws from a particular pool of items, and in some cases we actually combine some items in order to make it more viable as a speedrun start. So for example, for this character, which is Blue Baby, uh, we started them with Mutant Spider, so Quad Shot, as well as Triple Shot, giving him seven tiers shooting out. 
Yeah, and so the reason for you guys might think this is a little weird to just start off with all these items, but the reason is that quad shot all by itself is not viable for speedruns. It's just not quite good enough in order to beat the game in a consistent manner. And so we thought it would be fun to add triple shot in addition to it. And it really, obviously, it makes it a lot better. Now, speaking about mechanics, Blue Baby is actually one of the more unique characters as well. It's probably the most unique from the original six, the original seven that came out. Uh, Blue Baby can only have soul hearts and black hearts. Um, so you cannot have any heart containers. You cannot sacrifice those for devil deals, which is going to be really important here because Marcus only has three soul hearts. He won't be able to take a devil deal unless if it replenishes his life. Yeah, Blue Baby obviously considered one of the harder characters. But this starting item is one of the better ones, so Marcus is probably feeling pretty good, depending on what's in here. Yeah, he was oh. able to very big. So he is able to find a squeezy to gain two soul hearts. He takes one of them to go up to three and a half, which allows him to take his Devil Deal item, being that sacrificial dagger that we saw earlier, and then he went out and got the other soul heart. Beautiful. So we have a little bit of time here. We can probably fit in about two donations. Now I've got those donations right here. We've got $75 from Kenley, who says, Marcus and Daniel, keep up the great work. I'm so proud of both of you. Aw, thanks so very much, Kenley. And we've got $30 from Takara, who says, thanks for showing off this fantastic game and the dedicated communities that have been inspired by it to this day. Here's hoping Krampus doesn't ruin any more Devil Deals. <laughs> We're hoping, although Krampus right now wouldn't actually be half bad. Again, when Marcus at one and a half soul hearts, it'd be difficult for him to take a Devil Deal, so seeing Krampus early on right now, uh, as well as picking up that pentagram. Although, he did find the Pact. The Pact is going to give him damage up as well as two soul hearts, so that keeps him alive. He doesn't die because he hit zero. He got those two hearts at the very end of the effect, and now we're moving on into Caves 2. Beautiful. He's gonna bomb out of both of these L rooms. Or at oh. least attempt to. <laughs> just use another one. Oh, oh, nice. Or just use the fly. Look at that skill. The strats. Shout out to Marcus for being awesome. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so the reason why Sacrificial Dagger is so good is it just melts bosses, as you guys can see here. You're not going to take that, really. It wouldn't have gotten me to oh, over I see. three okay. and a half. Yeah. That way, if I took an Abaddon or something, I would be able to take that. Yeah. Very fair. Very fair. Yeah, there's a lot of little intricacies with the strategies mm. surrounding the okay. Devil Deal. Sometimes you want to leave health outside, and sometimes you want to take it. It's all depending on your current health situation. Now, this is a really unique situation here. Now, Marcus, one, he picked up Lazarus's rags. That's actually a transformation item. That's going to allow him to transform into a different character uh, upon death. So even though Marcus said he won't die, we'll allow this one. And he's going to turn into Lazarus. Lazarus has... Uh, oh, I'm not thinking. A little bit more damage. Unfortunately, yes, you cannot touch the bed. The bed, if you're on soul hearts, will actually give you three soul hearts replenished. Otherwise, it'll just heal you up to full health. Now, since he transformed into Lazarus, he only has the one heart container, uh, which means he cannot heal. So that bedroom, extremely good in speedruns for obvious reasons. It allows you to oftentimes just completely skip the floor you're on by bombing the carpet there. And Marcus utilized that because he has plenty of bombs. Well, he did, and now he's back to zero. But definitely worth using the last bomb there for that purpose. I'm dead. Very nicely done. Just wanted to hold our breath there, give him a chance. He does find the dead cat. He is going to take it up. Now the dead cat is going to allow him to live. Uh, he now has nine lives, and now he can use those lives in order to take devil deals. So that is a very good use. He's going to check the boss rush. Now the boss rush is very unique. If he takes one of these items, then he has to fight a ton of waves of bosses. It's not really worth it. But if you saw a good item there, he could have taken it, died, and spawned outside of the room. And that's the nice thing about having dead cat, is you can always, quote unquote, steal a boss rush item. And that's done in both casual runs and speed runs. See, that's fine. He doesn't get the 45 second penalty because he has all the extra lives from Dead Cat. This is a pretty difficult room. He's going to be trying to use his little brimstone in order to clear all the ads in the room. Oh, ooh, very nice. Oh. Yeah, you can clap for that one for sure, for sure. Dead end. 
So one interesting thing about the season, the specific category that Marcus is playing is that on every single character, you start with the compass. And so that means he's going to have a rough idea of where he's headed. He wants to obviously go to the boss on every single floor, directly to the boss. There's no really real reason to dilly-dally for the most part. Um, but sometimes it looks like the boss is one way, and it's really not. And so we call that just getting compass trolled. And I think that was probably the first compass troll to run. Yeah, not too bad being on the third character to get compass trolled. Yeah, it doesn't happen all that often, but, you know, it definitely happens from time to time. Now, Marcus might look like he's in a bit of trouble, and I would admit probably a little bit, but he does have a lot of damage. He still has that sacrificial dagger, and he does have five lives remaining. Oh, this is the hardest boss in the game right here. And that would be a commentator's curse. Totally, I apologize. Uh, the Matriarch is very annoying, very tanky, shoots out a lot of random things that you have to dodge. And since Marcus has slow fire rate, it's going to take a second here. Very nicely done. And a tears up. It's pretty good. Yeah, that tears up is definitely going to help him put out more damage onto the floor, so to speak. And then this way, he's going to feel much safer. Now, this is character number three, which means he's going to be going up into the cathedral and chest. That means that sacrificial dagger is going to be much more useful. If this was the lamb, uh, which was the boss that we saw in the last character, he might be in a little bit more trouble. One thing that just occurred to me is that um, the terminology might be confusing to you guys if you're not familiar with the game. So the protagonist, Isaac, is actually shooting tears. He's crying on people. And the game is all about... Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, He's similar to what I do every <laughs> single night, but we can talk about that later. So uh, to get damage up and attack up, you get tears up items that make you cry faster. So that's kind of an interesting little thing about this game. Yeah, the whole concept of the game is a little weird. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a dungeon crawler. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and very inexpensive as well, if you want to try and pick it up yourselves at some point. What is this floor? Yeah, so Marcus getting compass trolled again, as you can see. Yeah, he tried to sneak through the secret room. Which uh, I did. Which he did, and he got through it, uh, which is usually an indicator that, hey, we're going the right way. But unfortunately, he has to go all the way around, clear some more rooms. Uh, but luckily, he hasn't died yet. Yeah, normally Marcus would probably go in there with the stack dagger, but he's just trying to be a little bit careful and conserve his dead cat lives, it looks like. He's gonna play this a little safe, get his dagger lined up, and now Beautiful. he's gonna do that. Very nicely done. Now the shovel's gonna be useless at this point, unfortunately, so he's just gonna take the Book of the Dead, I believe it's called, and move on up. Yeah, shoveling does nothing in the cathedral. It, un unfortunately, it doesn't take you to the chest. Um, so you really want to see the shovel earlier on in the run so, so you can skip the quote-unquote normal floors. You mean you can't dig upwards? That's No, you cannot. That is very weird. I don't understand that at all. Yeah. Logic, man. Logic in an Isaac game. You're funny. Yep. Stack dagger that guy down. Marcus is being very careful here. One hit, and he's going to die. He's also holding on to Degas rune. Uh, that rune is going to allow him to build up a soul heart at one point. Um, so yep. he'll probably sit on that for a while when he needs it or when he builds up more health. So then that way he can just take full advantage of his lives. That he Where has. do you plan to use that, Marcus? Uh, I'll probably use it before the uh, Isaac fight up here if I don't have anything. Totally fair. That way he'll gain one more hit. Uh, some of the tiers on Isaac can be difficult on the boss itself. So that way he'll guarantee that he gets to his chest his chest containing four items for him to re-roll, and then that way, hopefully, he'll build something a little bit better. Yeah, another thing that just occurred to me is we didn't really explain what the primary item that Marcus has is called the D6. It's a, a dice. And what that does is it allows him to re-roll an item that drops on the ground. So Marcus has been doing this constantly over the, you know, the course of the last 30 minutes. Um, and that's really, most of the strategy in this game comes from using your D6 effectively. You want to know which items are good, which items are bad. But it's not just as simple as that, because some items are good with your particular build, and some items are bad with other builds, right? So you kind of want to roll for items that would be synergistic with your current build. So you really have to use a lot of knowledge in this game to figure out which items you want to keep and which items you want to roll. Of course. And a quick note on that Book of the Dead that he picked up, you might notice that there's some bones flying around him. Uh, those are temporary orbitals he can use for damage. As well as protection. Oh, yeah. Very nice. 
shout out to Yami Yama Ding Dong for discovering the strategy where you could stand in the center to avoid the shots. As you can see, Marcus did it there. Oh, Polly. That Polly. Would that be good? Yeah, I guess. I mean, we're at GDQ. We could take this. <laughs> All right, so Polyphemus is oh, massive damage Interesting. Up. He also decides to take the technology. Technology turns your tears into laser beams. This is going to give him basically piercing, so he's going to be able to hit more enemies. This build is wild, dude. This build is very wild. I'm very happy to see it at GDQ. I think he's doing it for, for GDQ, so can we Definitely. get some hype for this? Yeah. Oh, what happened? It was, it was a spike chest. It, it was a hype <laughs> death. It was a hype death. It was totally worth it. Spike chest. Uh-oh. Yeah, so not a big deal. Marcus has three lives remaining from all the extra dead cat stuff. He's gonna try and find at least one soul heart between here and the boss fight, or at least one health up. Yeah, one of the things that makes Isaac really interesting is that um, no one run is the same, and there's so many different items, and they all synergize with each other in different ways that, like, there's really a lot of variety in this game. Like, this is crazy. Like, seven super high-powered lasers that deal a lot of damage. Like, this is not something that you'll come across very often. Everyone's favorite depth one boss, the bloat, green bloat as well. Fires out those Ipecac tears, very hard to navigate at times, but Marcus handles it really well. He does get lucky, he gets a mini birdie room. Now this is gonna drop him a soul heart, so that's gonna give him some safety. He decides to take it now one room away. Yep, makes sense. Now that's gonna make him feel much more comfortable going into this boss fight. Yeah, you can just straight up go use your stack dagger on him. This is a little bit dangerous because it can spawn some flies. Like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> like that, But it yeah. doesn't matter because he had the extra hit. Beautiful. So that's whole heart commentator's reward. You're welcome. You're welcome on that one. So now we're on the fourth character whose name is Judas. And the random item that he's been assigned is called Magic Mushroom, which is a damage multiplier. And you can see it makes the character sprite a little bit bigger. It's also a subtle thing, but it's also a health up, and that health up is going to be really important since it is Judas. Judas normally only starts with one heart container. This gives him two, and then that way, even if he doesn't get a health up on this boss or the next one, which is actually fairly common Ooh. as he gets a damage up, uh, this will allow him to take multiple devil deals potentially on his basement too, so it's really setting up nicely. Uh, Marcus, why were you resetting at the beginning? For a good floor layout. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's something that some racers do, some speedrunners do especially. Uh, I'm too lazy, so I just kind of move on with it. Uh, but this allows him to get a uh, much more favorable floor layout because it's basement one. You can reset as much as you want and find maybe a boss fight that's two to three rooms away instead of a two by two. Away. Yeah, you can look at the map and count how many squares away the boss is. And what you're looking for is one that's only two to four away. And there actually other strategy that some players do is they just reset for a normal basement instead of a burning basement. And what that does is that guarantees you an easier boss. So I've seen both strategies employed um, by people who run this category. Very nice. Marcus does end up finding a couple more soul hearts, which is going to help him protect this devil deal that's coming up here. Whoops. Accidentally takes the, takes the health up. No big deal there. Not going to matter. Decides to take both items. Cambian Conception. Not really what you're looking for. Um, in a speedrun, next to useless, but um, there is always the possibility of proccing it early and getting a little brimstone, but that's extremely unlikely. So for all effects and purposes, that is not going to really help Marcus out. Now, you did get the transformation, though. Did you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, so certain items in this game, if you get a set of them, you get a transformation, which is a nice little bonus. And if you get three, quote unquote, dark items, you get turned into this Leviathan creature, which doesn't really do anything. It gives you two black hearts and flight. But besides that, it's nothing too important. Um, it's going to help Marcus out marginally. Flight is always uh, useful ancillarily. But um, overall, I would classify this as a pretty mediocre average run. But it has a lot of potential moving forward. So as we move into the later floors, he'll be able to get another devil deal, hopefully two, before the end of the foot fight on floor six. And uh, by then, hopefully, he'll find another knife. Shifty eyes. Yeah. Yeah, the tears are looking a little wimpy. That's okay. And this boss is going to give Isaac another, uh, Marcus another orbital. So you're always happy to see the horseman bosses in this game as a speedrunner because, you know, the orbitals are just so powerful. 
And one thing to note about the items themselves, you might notice, again, we mentioned that this was made by Edmund McMillan. He does do some shoutouts to some of his previous games as well as other games that he's worked on or has permission to. Uh, so that Cuba Meat, of course, shout out to Super Meat Boy and whenever its sequel comes out. It looks like we have a little bit of time before the boss fight, so we can probably fit in about two donations here. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Amadeus Ex Machina with $99.50, who says, Isaac was my game of the decade. I kept coming back to it year after year. Thanks for introducing me to another version of my favorite game. Here is 10 cents for every death on my classic and afterbirth save button. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've also got Two, uh, sorry, $25 from Sharp101, who says, the first time I've ever had to donate for my favorite game. Congratulations on making me feel like a scrub with only a scant 750 hours between Isaac and Rebirth. That is still a lot of hours in this game. That's, that's one thing about roguelikes that a lot of people really enjoy is that there's a lot of replay value behind them since there's so much uh, that you can do. No run is the exact same. Uh, I believe Zam has 8,000 hours in this game. Uh, like, it, that's what my Steam says, but it doesn't count, because yeah. like, I leave the game open a lot when that's I'm, fair. like, coding and stuff. That's fair. So. Uh, between coding and actually playing the game. But that's still 8,000 hours of looking at the game, uh, more or less. And then for myself, I'm over 7,000. So it's, uh, it's a lot of hours uh, that we've sunk into this. And that doesn't mean you have to sink in thousands of hours into this game to actually be really good at it. We know people that are just coming onto the scene as recent as like a year ago that are doing really well for themselves. Yeah, 2,000 more hours till I'm at the Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah, until expert you're an level. expert level. Yeah, 10,000 hours. Expert, yeah, <laughs> One day. Uh, so two things that Marcus did pick up over the last floor and a half. He picked up the Eye of Belial. Uh, the Eye of Belial is going to give you piercing in a sense, where once your tier hits an enemy, it's actually going to transform and deal, I believe, double damage on its uh, anything else that it hits. And then he picked up the uh, Death Touch, which also gives you piercing as well as a damage up. So that's kind of moot point at this point. Yeah, one thing we should mention, actually, is that the last time that The Binding of Isaac was ran at a GDQ was back at Summer Games 2015 by Slackaholis. And that was back uh, before any of the DLCs were released. And the game was relatively new back then. Yeah, and Slack did a great job, so shout out to Slackaholis. Yeah, shout out to back Slack. Um, yeah, back then, no one knew any of the best strategies, and um, everything was relatively new. But, like, four years have passed since then, obviously, and. The game has been played for thousands of hours, and like we pretty much have this stuff down to a science now. Um, the, we've really taken this game to the next level. Like, pretty much perfected every little time saver we can squeeze out of the game. And there's, and there's more to, you know, we're not done yet. We're still learning new things about the game. Recently, we discovered about the, uh, here's something that people out there may not know who play this game casually. If you touch the butter bean over and over, it has a something like a 10% chance to morph into wait what? That means if you're doing like a casual run and you get a butter bean, all you have to do is just touch it over and over and over and over, and you're guaranteed to get a weight wood eventually. So there you go, casual people. Nice little tidbits of information that I didn't even know myself. I knew it existed, but I didn't actually know how to do it. So thank you. Yeah, I just found out about that like a few weeks ago after, you know, 8,000 hours of playing, which is wild. I got the best item that a tournament is named after just now. Pageant boy, oh yeah. <laughs> so Marcus holds a very interesting style of Binding of Isaac tournament called Pageant Boy, and it's unlike anything else. And the point of Pageant Boy is not like a normal tournament where you have to beat the game as fast as possible. But in Pageant Boy, you have to beat the game with the most coolest looking build possible. And so, uh... Yeah, I still don't know how you judge that. <laughs> well, so it's judged by a panel of judges and the audience. And so, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I've always enjoyed the Pageant Boys that I've been into. Man, we should have just set that up as an incentive for this. Which character was the best looking? I don't know. I mean, so far, this look is actually pretty cool. I love Death Touch. It gives you that skull head. I think the most interesting build was the, the seven lasers that we saw, but... Okay, the seven lasers are pretty But he's got pretty three awesome. more characters to go. Oh, that ghost room is one of the hardest rooms. It is very difficult. Now, luckily, he did pick up the, uh, the dead cat again, so he does have nine lives. He also has an emperor card, so he will be able to skip to the lamb on this floor yet again. Oh, he didn't even notice that, yeah. And he also has the nail, uh, which we've seen in a previous round as well, which is going to generate him some hearts. So he's safe. It's going to be a little bit difficult, but he does have that cube of meat, so he will be able to deal damage quickly. But uh, it might be a little bit difficult. He'll probably lose a couple more lives along the way unless we get something in, his, uh, in, the, in the dark room. 
Yeah, a lot of casual players would consider the Emperor card to be the best card in the game, but even in a casual run, skipping all of the hardest rooms on the hardest floor is definitely, like, really, really, really powerful. And watch this. He's going to use his orbital on the boss. This is also something casual players don't know a lot. Look at how easy this is. Able to dance his way around. Now this is a little scary. Very nice. Nicely done, Marcus. Nicely done, because those exploding uh, socks, so to speak, uh, they can be pretty dangerous and spawn randomly right in your face. So. Oh, and I should mention another thing you're seeing here is that you may be confused that normally in the dark room you get four red chests, but one of the changes in Racing Plus is that we give four golden chests on the dark room to make it kind of more or less equivalent to the, the going to the chest. And that kind of equalizes the two paths. Kind of a, a little bit of a balance change there. Oh, no. So it's not so bad. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll try and keep this quiet for him. Uh, it's going to be a little bit scary. He did pick up Fruitcake. That's going to give him random tier effects on every tier. So hopefully he'll get some good props. Yeah. The, the bad thing about Fruitcake is that um, it can give you Ipecac tiers. And that's kind of the anti-synergy with um, using your Cuba meat and getting up real close. Because you just have a random chance to have it explode in your face. Mark is doing this pretty well here. Yeah, the one random scythe is from the, the the sticky tears item that was randomly given as part of the fruitcake. That was actually really impressive. I would not have been able to do that, and I'm considered, like, okay at this game, so Marcus is really showing off there. Now, Marcus is into his fifth character. This character is actually regarded as being one of the harder characters out there. This is the Lost. Now, the Lost, you might notice in the top left-hand corner, he only has one heart. Uh, that is accurate. He only has one heart. He dies in one hit. Uh, luckily, though, the loss does start with the... Um, Holy Mantle. The Holy Mantle, which allows you to take one hit per room. So that's good, but the Lost also cannot gain any health for this entire run, whether Soul Heart, Black Heart, or Red Heart. Did you just mention him something good? No. Wait, no. Oh, no, okay, never mind. <laughs> I, I was not freaking use out for a second. I was like, why is he shooting so fast? Now, the advantage to the Lost is that since he doesn't have any hearts, that means he can't give up any hearts for Devil Deals, which means he can just take Devil Deals. That is pretty much the case here. So he'll be able to take absolutely any double deal he wants. He doesn't have to worry about the health. So the loss, even though it's a difficult character for a lot of casual players, for speedrunners, it's actually not that bad, which is why Marcus is doing it fifth. Yeah, the loss is really well designed. Um, you know, it has advantages and disadvantages. Marcus just took a hit, so one more hit. Okay, he's safe. That Pact is going to give him a little bit more damage. That Horror Babylon is perfect for this character. Since the Horror Babylon only procs at half a heart or less, uh, half a red heart or less, unless of your E if it's at a full heart, uh, you will get that damage multiplier. You'll get that speed up as well. Since it's the loss with no health, the loss is always uh, procing that Babylon uh, increase. Yeah, that's a pretty decent double deal. It's not great, but not terrible either. It's workable. The, the really the thing you're looking for in a double deal is at least like plus one damage up. If you don't get that, then things are looking pretty grim. And Marcus mentioned in his pregame interview actually that if he got a really bad double deal, he would just reset the run entirely, start from the beginning, do the first two floors, and then get another double deal of that. And doing that is actually faster in the long run than having to, you know, truck through a really poor damage build. And as a quick note on his starting items again, he ended up starting Technology, which we saw with that Polyphemus on the other character, uh, as well as Coal. Now, that has a really interesting synergy with it, so it does give him a damage up uh, based on how far the tier is oh. from And I'm going to stop talking because no one cares, because he just picked up Epic Fetus. So Epic Fetus, one of the best items in the entire game, uh, probably like third or second best item in the game. And it's going to allow him to bomb through every room with these missiles. And interestingly, you can also see it's synergizing with this technology. Every time that the missile hits, it makes a spray of lasers throughout the room. Oh, oh baby! He got the goodness. four item devil deal. Um, four item Shadow. devil deals are yeah. pretty hard to find. Yeah. You can proc it, Marcus. He's just going to take it all. Watch this, watch this. He procs it while in the pickup animation, and now on his next character, he gets the hearts from the ceremonial robes. That's a very technical speedrun trick that a lot of casual players don't know. And shout out to Elad, uh, um, what's his? Elad Difficult. Elad Difficult, yeah. He's the one who I think first did that in like a televised broadcast tournament match. Um, that's where I learned it personally. 
Yeah, that was many years ago, so shout out to Elad. Yeah, that was in the Balls of Steel uh, tournament series yeah. by uh, Cobalt Street. Yeah, I love Elad. Shout out to Elad Difficult, man. Yeah. He's the Crypt of the Necker Dancer speedrunner as well. Yes, and he's very good at it. So the transformation that Marcus picked up, in, in addition to the millions of hearts that he picked up, uh, was Judas's shadow. Uh, that is gonna increase his damage because Judas uh, does have a higher damage starting point uh, than the loss, so he'll be able to just bomb through all these opponents. He's going super fast now, and uh, it's about time we got a carry run, so. Yeah, one interesting thing you guys can notice is that the ep the the Holy Mantle synergizes with Epic really? Fetus really, really nicely. You can bomb yourself through rooms to save a little bit of time as like kind of a speedrun strat. And Marcus, you can... Where is it? Where is it? Is it up and over top of the... I guess so. I, I suppose so. Kind of a trolley compass here. But yeah, watch Marcus as he bombs himself through rooms for the most part. Um, Man, this build is really good. <laughs> it's pretty good. I think we have time for uh, a donation right here. Absolutely. I've got $100 from Andrea Four, who says, go green. I'm go white. actually a Michigan fan, but I do appreciate a good rivalry. Good luck on the run. Uh, yeah, Marcus was actually really excited because his team won earlier today, so. Zach Dagger again. <laughs> All right, so the Sack Dagger, not as powerful as it is on a tier build, but still gonna be pretty useful. Yeah, look at that, beautiful. Just bombing himself perfectly through the room. Now, he might be choosing to bomb uh, the actual enemies in the room. Reason for that is because since he's bombing anyways, if it's only gonna take one bomb to clear, it's kind of a why not. This will also allow him to recharge his D6. Exactly. So he'll be able to actually roll through uh, his next item. So it's a nice combination of uh, strategy and skill. Yeah, so now he has his D6 up for the boss and he'll be able to roll the item if he so wishes. Easy peasy, look at that. So a lot of casual players maybe, oh nice, he saw the tinted rock. Those can be very hard to see on the womb and getting rewarded with two extra soul hearts. So a lot of casual players may think that there's quote unquote no skill involved to getting a really powerful build like this because all the enemies and bosses just melt. But on the contrary, um, in a speed run, every second counts. So you wanna be very precise with your movement. You wanna waste a single second. Um, even though your build is powerful, there's always little optimizations that you can make. Um, you always wanna be killing enemies like in the perfect way, not losing any time. Yeah, there's so. even something that he's doing there where he's placing the bomb just behind him. That way the knockback from the explosion is actually pushing him through the door instead of pushing him backwards. So very slight things, but that will cost you seconds. Nice, he's gonna swap for the Krampus head. And now you got another transformation, which essentially does nothing at this point. Yeah, with the Holy Mantle, Marcus doesn't really have to worry about his health at all. Um, you know, he pretty much has infinite life for the most part. Oh, nice, all the way to the boss already. Very fast floor. So now Marcus is actually gonna try and put his bomb on the other side of Isaac while also using his Snack Dagger because he likes to show off a little bit. I don't blame him here, it's a very good build. Um, so you guys may notice that one of the changes that Racing Plus does is in the vanilla game, there's a long fade out animation and then fades back in um, between floors. And that's like really, really annoying if you play this game a lot. Um, so one of the quality of life changes in Racing Plus is that it just kind of removes that animation and makes it so that you just jump out of the previous floor. And that really speeds things up and streamlines the gameplay a little bit. And also to point out, on the chest and the dark room, which are the final levels of this game, you're actually not able to bomb through the doors, which is why you're seeing Marcus clear all ah, of these rooms. So very that's good something point. to note uh, just for uh, newer players as well. As to, why is he slowing down? Well, it's to be cool as well. Yeah. Yeah, the, the chest is always the, the hard room. They didn't want you to be able to, to do an easy... Oh, wait, he starts with a knife. Okay. Yeah. So the random item that Marcus is assigned now is Mom's Knife, the best item in the game. And interestingly, out of all seven characters, you're guaranteed one uh, quote unquote big four item, which are considered the four best items in the game. So he kind of got lucky here. His one big four item happened to be Mom's Knife. So.
so he's probably very happy about that. Oh, and he has Mega Blast. Yeah, so uh, this is Eden. Eden is the most RNG heavy character in the game. The reason for that is because every time you start an Eden run, you have everything randomized. That includes your stats. So your health that you're starting with, the spacebar item that you're starting with, everything. So even though Marcus started with a knife as per the season six rules, he was able to reset to uh, the Mega Blast spacebar item, which we won't even say what it does. You'll just see it in a second. Oh yeah, Mega Blast, one of the most powerful active items in the game. And Marcus will be using it shortly, probably once he gets the caves one. Yeah. Oh, nice. Mm. You have zero bombs, so... Um, so the, the item that Marcus just took is called Bobby Bomb, and what that does is that gives you homing bombs. And interestingly, it gives you plus five bombs, but it's really bad in a speedrun, um, because you actually do not want homing bombs. You want to be able to bomb out of rooms. So what ends up happening is you try to bomb out of a room, and then it will, like, move away from the door and bomb an enemy. It's super annoying. Um, so for that reason, most speedrunners do not take Bobby Bomb unless they're completely out of bombs, like Marcus was. Ooh, Flight will be a good synergy with Mom's knife. Yeah, it'll let him avoid any obstacles that ne that's necessary, and... Here we go. Let's go. So this is Mega Blast. Uh, it rips through everything, as you can see. Oh, baby. Uh, it lasts for how many seconds? Uh, I don't know, 120? Yeah, a, a bunch of seconds. A bunch of seconds. It's a 15-room recharge, so it will take him a while to recharge. But primarily, since he has the knife, which is already a really good boss fighting item, he's gonna use it to try and clear as many rooms as possible, make it super easy to get through the floors, and then he's just gonna use the knife to rip through the boss. Yeah, so Marcus got it about halfway charged. Oh, and he's gonna backtrack for the battery as well, which is pretty smart. It's gonna take his time here, you know, be a little bit safer. Oh, that's good. Triple A battery is gonna be nice as well. It's gonna it's help gonna him recharge. gonna one charge on this. Now he only has to charge the Mega Blast to 11 instead of 12. It's gonna help him very slightly. All right, well, this run is going really fast. Um, he's probably not on pace for a sub one hour. That's probably impossible at this point, but uh, definitely gonna get a really solid time, I think. It's a very good time, very good time indeed. All right, I think we have time for a couple donations here, actually. Sure, we've got $10 from Duke Firebird, who says, greetings from Back Couch. Good luck on the run, and may all your cards be Emperor. Donation to Duke back there. Short. Thanks so much. And we've got $100 from Goliath, who says, I've played Isaac to a million and one percent completion on both PC and Switch, so I felt compelled to donate. Good luck on the run, and remember, Sissy loves you. <laughs> Sissy is oh, great. Oh, so lucky there. <laughs> That's exactly what I was talking about before, with the homing bombs really trolling you. But Marcus got lucky on that one. Yeah, Marcus is looking very pretty. He ended up picking up Abaddon, which is six black hearts. Yeah. Now, normally it would get rid of your uh, heart containers as well, but it doesn't really matter here. Yeah, you notice there that Marcus tried to pick up the soul heart and it didn't even work. And that's because in this game, you have a max of 12 hearts. And when you're at 12 hearts, it just prevents you from picking up any additional Thanks. health. Whoa. A big compass troll here. Also, shout out to the original Binding of Isaac game because there was actually no health cap back oh, then. Oh, yeah. So you could have like 900 hearts. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, it was awful. And the worst thing is, is you couldn't see it. So you would just have a whole bunch of hearts. Well, actually, that was fixed in the That eternal, was fixed in the final version. In the, the eternal, eternal version, version. yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there was a boss there, apparently. Um, <laughs> it got erased. Okay, that's a good item, but... I don't think it's worth no, it. Oh, yeah, I guess he has the... So, normally on speedruns, the crystal ball is an excellent pickup, giving you full mapping for the floor. However, remember that on this speedrun, Marcus has started with the compass. So he already pretty much has mapping for the most part. You can still get compass trolled, but you don't really need full mapping for the most part, which is why he decided to save his get-out-of-jail-free card for some future point. Um, yeah, so he would have technically been able to take the crystal ball, activate the boss pressure, and then use the get-out-of-jail-free card to escape. But he chose to not do that strategy. Um, where are you planning on using that card, Marcus? Probably a chest? I don't know. If it yeah, happens. Chest if I need it. Yeah. yeah. Something, well, it depends on what the Mega Stan also. Might not use it. Better to have it. Oh, not need baby. It. Better to have it and better to find that magic mushroom, again, which is a damage multiplier. Not that he needs it. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but. If it ever comes up. Okay, so here's a little interesting thing that you guys may have not noticed. The size of the Mega Blast is proportional to your current build's damage level. So you can see that it's actually increasing in size the further away it gets from the character. And that's because of the Lump of Coal, which synergizes with it. Lump of Coal is an item that gives you more damage the further away a thing hits. 
And so that is why we see the kind of diagonal arc of the Mega Blast. Really tiny things about this game, the, the polish in it is really what makes it beautiful. Yeah, the, the entire polish of the game is absolutely insane. If you compare it to the original Wrath of the Lamb that came out on Flash, they actually say that they couldn't fit everything that they wanted in the game into the actual game due to the limitations of Flash. So now that we see the game in its full glory with Afterbirth Plus, and due to being repentance, now you can see that we're just, you know, a nice brisk walk. This might be actually the easiest run of GDQ. I'm not, not gonna lie. So yeah, you notice that like in the in the Satan fight, there's a, like a lot of animations where um, you kind of have to just sit and wait and stare at the screen and wait for the animation to finish before you can proceed. And Racing Plus removed all those animations. So Marcus was just able to kill the boss, jump in the hole, move on to the next floor. It's all gameplay all the time here, baby, in Racing <laughs> Plus. He even used the Get Out of Jail free card, which opens up all doors no matter what. So even though he's in the dark room, he was able to just skip that uh, big room just because he didn't want to fight it. Yeah, the, definitely a good usage of the card there for Marcus. And now the Mega Blast head is up again. It's going to make quick work of the rest of the run. Now, we want to point out, this is the final boss of this level, and it's dead. Okay, so now this is the technical thing that's happening. So the Mega Blast beam prevents you from picking up an item. So what Marcus did there is he quit to the menu, went back into the game, and that cancels the remainder of the Mega Blast in order to just shave off a few seconds of his run. That's like one of the little technical tricks you can do in this game to save time. And so now the final character of the run is Azazel. This is his home run. This is his final character. Azazel is one that is the easiest character in the game. Uh, Azazel starts with this miniature laser blast called Brimstone, or a mini Brimstone. And uh, he also got to start with the starting item, Double Shot. So he's actually shooting two of them, even though you can barely tell. Yeah, actually, if you look very closely at the screen, you can kind of tell that it's two brimstones stacked on top of each other if you're very acute. And this beam does a lot of damage. Again, we're on basement one, basement two. And uh, again, he's just ripping through it. He's gonna take that oh. nail for safety, it looks like. Marathon strats. And then he's gonna take the sacrificial dagger, because why not? So if you're going all, the nail is considered obviously a defensive item, and in a speed run you're going full offense all the time. So like if Marcus was going for the world record, he would probably never take that nail. But in a marathon, obviously, it's a pretty good idea just to ensure that he doesn't die and lose 45 seconds to the ghost form thing. And again, he picks up the sacrificial dagger. So the biggest weakness, ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, the biggest weakness of right, the we'll Zazel for the nail. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest weakness of Azazel is the fact that you have short range. So picking up that Sacrificial Dagger, since it blocks tears, it'll allow him to be much more aggressive. Do you want to talk about what he just picked up? Yeah, so the item that Marcus just dropped the nail for is called the D100. Oh, did you just use it? Yeah, yeah. and he just used it. Perfect. So uh, the D100, yeah, again, continue on with it. Yeah, so it it is an item that normally you never use in a speedrun. Ever. What it, and what it does is it rerolls your entire build to other random items. Um, and it looks like Marcus doesn't have the item tracker configured. Prob oh, I guess you can kind of see what the items are. He has, yeah, pretty much his build is not as good as it was a second ago. It is much worse for those at home. It is much worse than what he had. But that's okay, yeah. because he could just use it again. There it is. Reroll. Oh, no! Oh! Oh, oh baby. So, uh, he ended up getting Monstro's Lung. Monstro's Lung synergizes with Azazel. Normally, you're spewing up a bunch of tears and vomiting it everywhere, and it's disgusting. But with Azazel, since it's vomiting lasers, those lasers are now random, and they're gonna go in absolutely every single direction. And Marcus is also getting a little greedy. I saw that. He's looking for the head. I know he's looking for Tammy's head now, checking those uh, golden chests. Yeah, Tammy's had one of the strongest synergies on the Azazel character, or any character with a Brimstone attack, because it allows you to basically insta-clear every single room. Yeah, actually, when he... When Marcus took the D D100, I actually thought he would wait until the end of the run to use it. But and he actually used it with everything. But he actually used it immediately, which was very surprising. And he used it again, and now he has... nothing. Uh... <laughs> Oh, uh, he's back to his original Brimstone, it looks like. Uh, he's gotten a couple of damage ups, uh, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, I guess keep going until you get Tech X or Knife or something, right? Just keep going. Yeah, just Yeah, why not? Keep going. We got time. If, oh my if God. everything goes horribly wrong, he can just start over. It's okay, it's his Azel. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Uh, we did get a transformation from Mother, so if you do pick up three mom-based items, 
you get this yes mother transformation, which is that knife in the back of the character. So that's why there's a little knife there saying hello. What happened to the D6? It's gone. It, I don't have the school bag. It goes away. Oh, oh right. He rerolled the school bag. Oh, does so. the D6 just, like drop on the ground, or does it just disappear? It just disappears. Oh, that's. Okay, interesting. I feel like everyone is very excited for this, <laughs> except for Zam, who's now like, oh my goodness, I didn't program this right. <laughs> yeah, that's weird that the D6 disappears. I would expect it to drop on the ground. So, yeah, I think the strategy for Marcus here is just gonna be keep re-rolling until he gets something good. I think he's just gonna re-roll anyways, let's be honest. Oh. Is that an epic? That is an epic. All right, well, we've got a bit of time, and he doesn't have a teleport out, oh. so the showman himself How come it doesn't... What? <laughs> it doesn't do the laser <laughs> Okay, what? Uh, Zam is... You're, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. So normally when you have the brimstone and you have epic fetus, it synergizes together such that eight brimstone layers spread across the entire screen. But for some reason, that is not working currently. I'm not sure why. It doesn't work. Oh, on and the it's Oh, I see. Oh, okay. 8,000 hours, and we still, yeah. you know, it happens. It Darn, happens. dude. That is a shame. So this is the boss rush. Uh, again, normally you don't actually fight it, especially in a speed run, but Marcus likes to, you know, he's a showman. He's a showman. He's feeling good. Uh, so he has to go through all of these different waves of bosses that you would normally fight. Now, an interesting one with the Blastasis there, I believe it's Blastasis. Yep. Uh, since it was transforming into its second form, the game thought that it was actually dead, which is why it actually spawned more enemies. So. They look so happy. You ever notice <laughs> Not that? Not for they long. Hop up and down, and they're dead. But, you know, they look so happy in the meantime. Uh, speaking of being happy, uh, we can probably read off like three or four donations here, because it'll be a while. Sure thing. We've got $23 from Jessica Ecker, who says, We know you will win. Good luck, Uncle Marcus. Love, Aww. Maddie and Kayla. P.S. Go green. Go white. We've also got $100 from Adam Extreme, who says, Happy 10th anniversary, GDQ. Donating for the name Bonk in Skyward Sword. Come on, Bonk. And $50 from Storm Rider, who says, Hello from Backstage. Shout outs to Casper and Marcus. Hope to see more Isaac at future GDQs. Yeah, I mean, if you guys are enjoying this run, are you guys enjoying this run? <laughs> we would love to bring Isaac back again since we have Zam here who's willing to code anything. We've got Repentance coming out, hopefully this year, fingers crossed. Uh, knock on wood, everyone, please. Um, yep. We've got a lot more content coming out with Isaac, and we can just dream up of many different ways to run this game. Maybe we'll do a race. Not that I'm suggesting anything for the future, um, but seeing a race of this, like two people going at it, maybe it's Marcus and myself. Maybe we can get Auntie out here. Uh, shout outs to Auntie, who was supposed to be here, but couldn't make it, unfortunately. Um, it would be absolutely amazing to see a race for this game. Yeah, races of this game are super hype. We do, we do tournaments, 1v1 tournaments all the time. It's super competitive. Usually races can be very close. And now that's it. Marcus has completed the boss rush. Gonna trade out. And that was the boss rush. Hey. Yeah, I think it's time to reroll. I think Marcus is a little scared for the reroll. So I wonder if he can go through the whole pool. Oh, he has a range is really long. Yeah, his range is suddenly Holy really cow. long. And I, I think no he has idea. my reflection. He might have my reflection on this one. Yeah, my reflection gives you a whole bunch of range. It's a super powerful synergy with Azazel. Um, which is interesting because normally my reflection is pretty useless. Yeah, I also want to give a shout out to Northern Lion. Uh, he is not a racer of this game. Uh, but he was actually one of the first people to use a D100 in a official race. Interesting. Yeah, it was him versus uh, Rockley Smile way back in the day. Oh, it was I a show match, yeah. and he picked up the D100 and he used it. And everyone's like, "What the heck are you doing?" And it like paid off. He won. Oh, yeah, so. nice. Yep, I wouldn't expect anything less. Well, nothing less from NL. Nothing less ever. Yeah, so the build is pretty decent. Um, <laughs> I guess. He's, okay, he's pretty a guppy. Decent. I mean, he has Guppy, the strongest transformation in the game. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. so one interesting thing about the D100 is that you actually get to keep your transformations through the rerolls. So, like, right now, Marcus pretty much has, like, almost every transformation of the game at this point. And it also keeps your health through the transformations, which is why Marcus has 12 red hearts. 
And he's still re-rolling. Oh, oh. We, got some green. we got some green. Oh, and the Wiz. So the item that's making the thing split is called the Wiz. And uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good on a Brimstone build. Uh, yeah, it's pretty annoying otherwise, but it is pretty good on a Brimstone build. Yeah, like speedrunners almost never take this item unless you're at a... Oh, he's going to Hush. Why not? Why not? So this is a boss that's not in this official run. Uh, in fact, it might actually break the mod, but we won't talk about that. Uh, <laughs> it should be fine. It, sh it should be fine. Because, like, after you kill Hush, the two pass spawn, you can shoot Unless he goes the other direction. But, we, again, we won't we won't encourage him. Uh, so there's four items here similar to the chest or the dark room. There's also two treasure rooms with two items each. You can only take one. There's also a shop, and uh, there's this box. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, so this is just the blue baby fight, and then once he kills this, it'll go to the real boss of this area called Hush. There it is. Now the hush is a gigantic pimple, as far as I know. Yeah, I don't. I think it's supposed to be like, I don't know. I I don't know. I never. I fought hush like five times just for my thousand one percent. Yeah. Um, but it's got a lot of health. Now Marcus's build is insanely strong, yet he's still struggling here, and that's because of a bunch of different mechanics that were introduced to kind of these super ultra end game bosses that were created. Well, actually, I think isn't damage scaling removed? I can't remember. I I feel like it's removed, and it just has a lot of health. <laughs> But either way, uh, this is gonna take a hot second, so we can probably read two more donations before we uh, finish off this run. Sure thing, we've got $100 from Jay Kowalski42, who says, this is a killer run. Congrats, UDQ, keep up the wonderful help. work. Yeah. Thank you. And we've got $200. This is hard, guys, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, $200 from Root One Wooloos, who says, Casper, have you found our shiny sibling yet? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, shout outs to whoever that was. Uh, I have been shiny hunting on Route 1 for a shiny Wulu for 50 hours. <laughs> oh my god. It is the worst. And I'm no, I'm actually a Wulu trainer now. So that is my life. We, we can fit in one more donation. I got it. I got $200 from Chris Cross, who says, thank you for everything GDQ has done to help fight cancer. Wishing the best of luck to all the runners and looking forward to watching this year's lineup. Yeah, it's an absolutely insane lineup for this GDQ. The 10th anniversary, they had to go big. They had to bring back Isaac after five years. Let's be honest, that's the biggest run. That's the biggest run. And that's the hush. All right. Fun guy. <laughs> What is fun guy anyways? Three mushrooms? Yeah, three mushroom items. And you when do you a, ever get that? Then you become that. a mushroom, yeah. When do you ever get that? It's kind of hard to see because he has all these weird transform. Oh, oh, okay. you're Bob! Oh, nice, dude. And this is a crazy build. Go figure. Uh, so that's Ipecac with the... Hamaklora. Yeah, however. I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce that word. Yeah, but, uh... It's anti-grav, too. Oh, it's anti-grav, oh, too. So he's holding the charge and then releasing it to fly out. So how come it doesn't have the brimstone component? That's really dumb. It's, I don't Azazel think it works with it. Doesn't, Azazel brim doesn't work with that. I would probably yeah. consider that a bug, but that's OK. Yeah, I'll tell the developer. There's a bug in your. Yeah. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> and uh, I mean, we're going into the last floor. Uh, I'm sure we'll have some things to say after the run, but Again, it's been an absolute dream to have Isaac coming back. They're calling for the reroll. Now we're on Tech X. Oh, nice. Tech X being one of the best items in, in the game. Dude, sure. he's got technology too, so he has both of them. Oh, he's got all the, the double laser, dude. He's got the double laser. Now, this is a good build right here. And the sprinkler will be very interesting with the run. He's going to use it probably on the final boss. Yep. yep. Well, there's going to be a whole bunch of lasers on the screen in the final boss. I mean, what better way to end off a run, really, right? Yeah, this build is wild. And he's a kitty cat with all these blue flies. I feel like Marcus is now full clearing just because he can. I'm not entirely sure. It might be intentional. Soak in the moment. You know, this is your this is your championship moment. Could be the lack of map. <laughs> Could be the lack of a map that he lost. Oh, yeah, right? He doesn't have right. a compass anymore. I forgot about that. <laughs> So, uh, this, apparently this game is hard. <laughs> and there's another dead end. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Put on display the true skill that comes into Isaac, especially when you don't have a map. It's just walking everywhere. He's got a magnet attached to him, too, I saw. But we're almost there. Oh, Stranger Tractor is part of the build, yeah. Yeah. 
Interesting. Oh, Marcus is getting rid of all of his flies intentionally, it looks like. Yeah, so that the, so that the sprinkler, sprinkler can do its job. So he's going to enter one more room. Hopefully there's enemies to waste them on. There we go. All right, very nice. Still alive a little bit. Let's just get that knife in there. Oh, okay. nice. Killing it with the knife from the back. Very that nice. That was very stylish, Marcus. And we're coming up on time. That's what the sprinkler does. As soon as the sprinkler does its job oh. and time. All right. Very nicely done. So killed a little bit of extra bosses there. A little bit. Had a little bit of fun. Still pretty fast. Not a bad run, not a bad run. Not a bad run at all. Uh, Marcus, anything you want to say, man? Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for having me here. I appreciate the crowd getting hyped. All my friends, family watching at home, I really appreciate it. You all are why I do this, but yeah. All right, thank all you, everyone. I got. you had a, hope you had a good time. And thank you so very much to the Isaac community as well uh, for cheering us on, for supporting Marcus and, and myself to get here as well. Uh, thank you so much to them. Thank you to all my family that got me here as well uh, and my girlfriend at home. Uh, hello, I know you're feeling bad uh, and I'm, I hope you feel better soon. So uh, to everyone else out there, stay tuned. We have the Super Mario Bros. 300% race coming up. 10th anniversary, AGDQ. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. I hope you guys enjoyed. I mean, we're still here. <laughs> Let's give one more round of applause to Stone Age Marcus for that incredible, uncanny, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth run. Don't go away. Like they just said, that Super Mario Brothers 3 100% race is coming up. It's going to be incredible. But in the meantime, we've got some donations. We've got $100 from One More Time GFSN, who says, shout outs to cartridge blowers. Oh, that's me. And all the announcers and runners at this event. Keep up the great work. And we've got $1,000. From PM148, no comment, but thank you for that incredible amount of money. We've got $50 from Shuffles, who says, can't wait for the SMB3 race. I can't either. $100 from Crew uh, Car, who says, watching the stream with my nephew, and he's having a blast. $10 from Fire Spectre, who says, first time donating. I've been uh, watching this for so many years, and it makes me happy to see how far this has come. Shout out to my friend Rage, gonna donate $10 every day of the event for the 10th anniversary of the event. I'm going to send you right over to an ad from Twitch. Be right back.
All right, and we're back here at AGDQ 2020. Read another donation here. We've got twenty dollars from uh, Shadon Sang, who says, "If everybody is watch who is watching donates five bucks, it would really be a nice seven hundred thousand dollars. Wouldn't it be awesome to break the first million by tomorrow?" Well, we're getting pretty close right now. Let's see. The total is around seventy-three thousand six hundred and four dollars. Is that right? No, seventy-nine thousand. If we can donate a little more, we can get at least to that 100000 during Super Mario Brothers 3. <laughs> AGDQ 2020 is brought to you by Team Meat. Team Meat, we're great at making games, terrible at estimating time. Super Meat Boy Forever is coming to the Epic Game Store, Switch, Xbox One, and PS4 in 2020. We're 99% sure it'll be 2020. You can visit www.supermeatboy.com or follow us on Twitter, at Super Meat Boy. But don't expect a ton of updates. We're busy. $50 from an anonymous donor who says, keep up the great work, AGDQ. Thank you so much. $100 from Cheesy Bob who says, a friendly reminder to all who are donating to check if their employer does charity gift matching. Mine does and will be doubling all my donations over the course of the week. Well, that's like $200. Thanks, Cheesy Bob. $100 from Neckmal33, who says, Hi, AGDQ 2020. This is Neckmal33 from France. I'm watching GDQ events since 2013, and I'm still in awe of the fantastic work all the staff and all the runners do to create such great entertainment for an entire week. Happy 10th birthday, and I hope for 10 more soon. And also, good luck to Killa Lombax for this amazing run. Okay, we're gonna head on over to the interview station for an interview with Gymnast 86 on Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Hey there, Kung Fu for Cup back here. I am with Gymnast 86 who is about to be running his Skyward Sword any percent run. And so Jim, I have learned today from him that uh, the run for Skyward Sword is as complicated as Ocarina of Time, which is something that you don't usually hear about since it's a bit less popular, you could say, of a Zelda 3D game? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, uh, definitely not the most popular 3D Zelda game, but it is one that has a lot of thought and a lot of complexity that goes into pretty much any run of the game these days. Yeah, for sure. And I've heard that that it seems like the, the run has had a ton of growth, not only since back, what, in 2014, but also as of late, it seems like there have been some really big stuff. Yeah, so... Uh, in about, at about 2014, uh, this game was first shown off at SGDQ. Uh, the runtime at that event was about five hours and 35 minutes. Wow. And then four years later, it got another showing at SGDQ 2018, and the runtime fell by about, you know, 
30 minutes or so, because that run was a 504. Now, since then, since SGDQ 2018, uh, the time for the any percent record has gone down by about two hours and 45 minutes. Wow. Which is absolutely huge wow. for a Zelda game that, for most of its history, was considered to be like unbreakable, practically. Yeah. So, so what's changed since now and then, since then and now? Like the biggest skips, things like that that you've discovered. Right. So, uh, one of Skyward Sword's biggest glitches is known as back in time. Okay. It's where you uh, game over, you reset the game and continue at the same time, and then you suddenly you're playing on the title screen. We'll be seeing a lot of that in the run today. Uh, basically, back in time. Uh, there are a lot of different things you can do in back in time. And uh, last May, uh, we figured out that there was actually a very um, sort of complicated way that we could take flags from the back-in-time state and push them onto a different map from where back-in-time is. Okay. And that allows us to set a whole range of uh, game flags that we normally should not be able to set as early as we do. That's crazy, and that's really helped with that like huge time save. Yeah, absolutely. Which is amazing. Well, I've heard that, I mean, it's, you know, it's more than just you involved that's really kind of built up this run over the years. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's a whole bunch of people out there in the community who, uh, once we figured out that we could do this in-game, uh, there was just a huge effort to help document every single thing that we could think of in the game, right? Like, you know, of course, we'd go through the game with a memory viewer, and we'd look at, you know, what actions would set what flags in memory. But not only that, we'd actually, like, go out and search online and download save files that other people have and, like, read those save files for what flags that those uh, files would have. So there have actually been some flags where, like, we see that there's a flag set on some file that we downloaded online, but we don't actually know what corresponds to it because we can't figure out how to set that flag. Okay. So what do you do in that instance? Uh, in, th in that instance, we just write, like, something should be here, but we don't know what it is. <laughs> something here. <laughs> I mean, all the important stuff we have documented, right? Like, if, right. if something that we know exists like should be somewhere, we're just like, yeah, it's something really obscure that like is probably not very important. That's cool. And I got to see this whole spreadsheet, like document after document of some of how these flags like correspond and relate, yeah. which is very fascinating. <laughs> it was really, really cool. Um, and so if anybody else was interested in this kind of thing, like helping discover more or wanting to get involved, maybe try out the run, what would you recommend them um, search up? Uh, well, I would definitely recommend that they join the Skyward Sword speedrunning Discord. Uh, if you go to speedrun.com slash L-O-Z-S-S and then go to the Discord link, uh, you can find a link to the Skyward Sword speedrunning Discord uh, where there's just usually, you know, discussion and uh, resources or resource listings for okay. different things that you might want to get more involved. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you guys should definitely get involved because this run is super cool. Um, would you like to maybe do some social media questions? Uh, sure. Let's do it. All right. Let's pull up some questions. Okay. So um, at BJ Mashed Potato asks, uh, what is your favorite part of the run? Uh, favorite part of the run would probably have to be the Ancient Cistern dungeon. Okay. Uh, the Ancient Cistern's actually gone through, like the rest of the game, a lot of different changes uh, that make it pretty interesting. Um, we actually start the Ancient Cistern dungeon by spawning in the wrong spot of the dungeon. <laughs> like, you know, normally you'd walk into a dungeon and you're at the entrance. Uh, when we start the Ancient Cistern, we actually start it at, like, in front of the boss key chest. Oh, interesting. Like, down <laughs> below? Yeah, like, down oh, below. Oh, that's the crazy. Yeah. So, and then you, like, do the dungeon sort of in, like, a reverse order to, like, complete everything. And it just, like... It just works together so well, in my opinion. Yeah, it's kind so. of like literally flips it over, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. All right, let's um, grab one more. So this is from at Pact1017, who says, although a Switch port for Skyward Sword is unlikely, if it ever did come out with less motion controls, <laughs> would you keep running the game for the Wii or try speedrunning it for the Switch? Uh, well, I definitely would try to speedrun it for okay. the Switch. Uh, you know, I would probably at least do one run to mm -hmm. see if I like it or not. You know, there, I assume or I hope there would be, you know, more quality of life changes that would make the game faster in a speedrun sense also. Like, you know, yeah. faster text, maybe being able to skip a few more cutscenes here and there. Um, and know, like, hey, yeah, you got this rupee. Yeah, every time yeah play, you, got right? this, you got this green rupee for the 10th time. Here's more text. <gasps> wow. <for it. laughs> yeah, that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I definitely would try speedrunning it. I don't know if I would like it because I would have to try it first. But right. I would definitely give it a shot. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to the run. It's going to be amazing. And uh, I, you know what? I would just say for file name, we're loving the honk vibe. We really we're loving are. the honk vibe. So uh, guys, keep that up. Good file name. Yeah, good file name. It's our favorite name. so far. Donate for Honk. 
Wait, this is doing something else. What is this doing? Let a goose in here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Very clearly not holding that goose. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, as you might know, I'm Sent, and I'm here to tell you about some of the amazing prizes that you guys can win. Now, our upcoming Super Mario Brothers 3 run is actually going to be your last chance to get in on a bunch of super cool prizes. Here's the long and short of it. A $25 donation is going to get you in for everything that we have that is uh, limited to the block for pre-show to Super Mario Brothers 3. So get those donations coming in, guys. Oh. So first off, I want to talk about a kind of special prize we have going a little bit longer today. Uh, it's actually open until the end of Tetrisphere tonight, and that is an AGDQ 2020 banner. Uh, it is a one-of-a-kind, six-foot-long banner done by our very own LLK, uh, our in-house artist. She does all of the wonderful whiteboards you've seen uh, in the interview area, as well as just all of the super cool banners you might have seen on social media. Um, it's got a CGDQ theme. I think it's actually the banner she designed for classic games done quick, but kind of modernized 10 years later. Super cool, and that's a $50 cumulative donation uh, today until the end of Tetrisphere. So hey, $25 now, $25 during our next prize block, and bam, you're entered to win it. Uh, so let's talk about some of the prizes that are available right now. Of course, we have some amazing Binding by Isaac Perlers from Duke Fireboard featuring those Power 4 uh, that they were talking about during the run. Uh, a bunch of really super strong items and super awesome Perlers. That's a $10 minimum donation, and they are super cool. Uh, of course, from Mecha Fly Guy, we have this absolutely beautiful Mario Zone Cross Stitch. Again, Super Mario Land 2, such an underrated Mario game. It had such like cool themed zones. Mario Zone, one of my favorite, and this shows the zone fully complete with all the parts of Mario opening up for the different levels. It's a $20 minimum donation, again, from now until the end of Super Mario Brothers 3, so make sure to get those donations in as soon as you can. Uh, we also have a, a Metroid Custom Tumbler, which is uh, super great. You know, hey, you need something to hold your coffee in. You need something to, uh, to drink out of. It's provided by J-Heart Design, and uh, it's super cool. I believe it's a $10 minimum donation, again, from now until the end of Super Mario Bros. 3. Everything else I'm going to be talking about will end at Super Mario Bros. 3, so make sure to get those donations in. Uh, we also have this wonderful Metroid Do Not Feed mug. Don't feed the Metroid, guys. It's a bad idea. They'll want a cookie if you give them a glass of I, I read a book about it once. It's, it's not too important. Anyway, it is a $10 minimum donation, and it's a super cute little mug. Uh, it comes to us from Geekish Gifts, and again, $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Super Mario Bros. 3. Moving on to some cool art, we have this title screen print from the original Metroid. It comes to us from Studio Pen Pen. Just a nice, cool, like, watercolor-y crayon take on the Metroid title screen from NES Metroid. $10 minimum donation from now until the end of Super Mario Bros. 3. Also, on the art side, we have a cute little Princess Peach watercolor uh, painting. Uh, it's from AKD's, AKD Designs. It's only a $5 minimum donation, and that's quite the steal. It looks uh, super cute, and you can head over to gamesdonequick.com and check out the tracker for a great picture of it. Uh, again, $5 minimum donation from now until the end of Super Mario Bros. 3. Of course, we cannot talk about prizes without talking about our amazing grand prize, which is a custom replica from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. Um, you can get a sword and shield uh, that we've shown over the past couple of events customized to your heart's desire. They've also sent us in this absolutely beautiful uh, Legend of Zelda-themed fishbone guitar. I believe it's also available as a bass. Uh, I mean, hey, it's super cool and it's a cool option. Or if neither of these strike your fancy, you can work with Heroic Replicas to design a prop to your liking. Um, and hey, that is a $200 minimum donation throughout the entire marathon, but it's cumulative. So hey, again, get $25 in now, get $25 in later. And before you know it, you could be winning your very own Legend of Zelda Fishbone guitar. Guys, that's going to be all for me. Uh, thank you all so much. We've already raised $83,000 for charity. That's, that's insane. It's, it's Sunday. Like, what's going on? That's crazy. Give yourselves a round of applause. You deserve it. But let's keep that donation total climbing ever higher as we get ready for Super Mario Brothers 3 with Mitch Flower Power, The Haxer, and Stewie Cartman. Thank you very much, Sent. And building on what Kung Fu Fruit Cup was talking about earlier, we've got $1,000 coming in from an anonymous goose who just says, honk.
Excellent. We are ready to go. We are heading into video Armageddon with the incredible Super Mario Brothers 3 race with Mitch Flower Power, the Haxter, and Stewie Cartman. Give it up! All right. Hello, everybody. And we're back! <laughs> Luckily, we're back with some great more donations. Uh, we've got $10 from the little Hylian, who says, Hi from the front row! Looking forward to the SMB3 race. Shoutouts to all the runners, counters, and commentators. Special shoutouts to Glitch Cat and Cartridge Blowers. That's, that's me. Hi, little Hylian. We've got $15 from Marcy August. Good luck, racers, in this SMB3 race, Mitch Stomp 2020. Mitch Stomp 2020! I had to do it to him. We've got $50 